Well, I was astonished and horrified by the story this week that the Australian Labor go government, Albanese's government, had called in, formally summoned, the Israeli ambassador, Amir Maimon, good bloke, by the way, to Canberra to tell him that Israel cannot, that Australia would not support Israel if they got into a war with Hezbollah. Now, Hezbollah is a vile, evil, Iranian-backed terror organisation threatening to annihilate the North, if not all, of Israel. Not only did the Albanese government have the sheer gall to call in the Israeli ambassador in what is an existential threat to the nation of Israel, after all the atrocities we've seen going back to October 7th, what we now have is they didn't even do it. They got the junior minister, Tim Watts. The Albanese government should hang its head in absolute shame. Joining us now is the president of the Australian Jewish Association, David Adler. David, I was just appalled by this. Some junior guy, Tim Watts, running around, dressing down the Israeli <laughs> ambassador when we're talking about an existential threat to that nation. What did you make of it? Look, Rowan, you're right. It, it was a disgrace. Uh, we were shocked about it. Uh, credit to the Daily Telegraph for breaking the story. The headline in the Daily Telegraph was that it was an insult to Israel. Um, that's way too mild a description, frankly. Uh, this is nothing short of diplomatic jihad from the Australian Labor government. Uh, it's worse than a slap in the face. I don't think it has ever occurred before that an Australian government has insulted an ally in conflict. But it gets even worse. What they've done is they've aligned Australia with a prescribed terrorist organisation, mm. Hezbollah, a proxy of Iran. So they're um, betraying the ally, they're betraying the democratic uh, country, the only one in the Middle East. On Thursday last week, uh, over 200 rockets and UAVs were fired into Israel. There are over 60,000 internal refugees in Israel. This is Israelis who live in the north who've had to leave their homes because of these attacks. Um, and Israel has no choice but sooner or later to deal with Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. And Australia declaring that it won't stand with Israel but will, in effect, be doing Hezbollah's bidding Well, let's is have a listen, horrible. David, to this character. Let's have a listen to this Tim Watts mm. character. Mm. Some in the opposition think there should be no state of Palestine. We even saw Senator Sharma, who should know better, hosting an event in Parliament House for extremists who are campaigning against a two-state solution. Mm. So this character... Oh, that was you, by the way, David. It was. David Sharma. David Sharma had your organisation there for a briefing and a discussion, and this Labor government... Penny Wong, Albanese, Tim Watts, these people are no friends of the Jews of Australia. There's not a Jewish person or a supporter of Israel who should ever vote for the Labor government in this country again, in my opinion, David. Well, Tim Watts has no idea what he's talking about. He's at least 40 years out of date. And recently there have been uh, a number of studies done in Israel about whether there is support for the establishment of a state of Palestine or not. Uh, there has never been one, by the way. And uh, the vast majority of Israelis uh, oppose it. So what we are doing is we, are, we have aligned our views with the majority, the vast majority in Israel. But how do you feel Israel. with uh, someone like Watts using parliamentary privilege mm. to label you an extremist for holding an opinion that's held by the majority of Israelis? Uh, look, it's I mean, what does that say about Israelis? I mean, by, by extension, he's, he's calling them extremists. Well, it, it's if you oppose the two-state solution, apparently you're an extremist. It's even misuse of the English language. I mean, mm. extreme would normally mean three standard deviations <coughs> from the mean. That's, that's an extreme. Uh, I've never heard a majority described as extreme before. But, <laughs> but here, here's, here's my response. Uh, Tim Watts, I challenge you to a debate on the subject 
of a two-state solution. Now, take it up. We'll do it Oxford University style with a moderator. And uh, let's see if you can back up that ridiculous assertion. Let's do it here on Outsiders. OK, Tim Watts, get you here with David Adler. Let's have the debate. Let's see if you actually know what you're talking about. James. Well, that was must-see TV, but I want to ask you, David, too, about the extraordinary events around Fatima Payman, the senator from WA. Now, the thing that sort of surprises me on one level is that it seems like there's only about a cigarette paper's worth of difference between what uh, Senator Payman believes and where Labor is being dragged to. How concerned, though, are you that Labor is going to be dragged further and further to this extreme position by the threat of other Muslim independents uh, rising in seats in Western Sydney, where a number of Labour front benchers uh, hold their seats at the moment. Um, and is this a concern that the government is going to be pulled further and further into this weird uh, position that's embraced both by, you know, the hard left Greens and Muslim uh, voters? James, you're absolutely right. And earlier in the show, um, you all were discussing the outcome of the UK election, where indeed already elements exactly like that uh, have been elected into Parliament. Um, and the trend has started in Australia. We know that they're getting organised. We know it's well-funded. There are, are websites cause, uh, called uh, The Muslim Vote. And I think that, unfortunately, uh, a decision has been taken by the Labor number crunchers that Israel is expendable. They don't mind throwing the safety of the Jewish community under a bus. Uh, these sort of actions and trends that you're describing um, fuel anti-Semitism. They fuel a risk to not just the Jewish community, but those are, that support violent jihad are emboldened. And I think the coalition needs to jump on this, not just as a Jewish-Israel issue, but as mm. a law and order issue.